Is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi if he considers blues music to be folk music, and Big Bill says, Well, I never heard of no horses. <laughs> show is Horse to Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin. Our guest today is Jim West. Welcome to the show, Jim, and Frank Soule. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. I really love to be here, and I know Frank does too. It's been a long, long time. It's been a long time since either of you have been on the show. That, that too. It's been a long time since I played with Frank. It's been a long time since breakfast. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about that medley you just played. Yeah, that was uh, some French-Canadian tunes. One was called You Married My Daughter and Yet You Didn't. That's the beginning one. I think that's anatomically impossible. But uh, the second one was called The Kitchen. Uh, and uh, I like them because it goes from the key of G to the key of A. And A is the fastest of all keys. If you know, I might have been running behind you. It goes so fast that only dogs can hear it sometimes. <laughs> but it was a good, a good piece of tunes. I, I'm, I think they're great, great stuff. See, so here I'm a lot slower than at a concert dance, probably. Yeah, they're lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, what do we got to do now? Um, 
You tell me. Yeah, you tell me. What? Uh, we have a medley in D? Oh, a medley in D. All right, we did reels. Now we're going to do um, some jigs. Yeah. And uh, you got reels and jigs, and that's about it. So we'll... And waltzes. This is some derived jigs, Irish derived jigs. They're not truly Irish, except the last one is. Jim West showing us some of that prize-winning fiddling. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Well, um, you can get most anything if you know the judges well enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, um, we did a few uh, things and got lucky, uh, like at the Irish Fla uh, in Pearl River. And um, some of the singing I've been doing. I'll sing one of the songs, maybe I'll sing one of the songs that I have sang in Ireland uh, to win a uh, prize over there in the All Ireland, but that that'll be after the next song, which is what? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, next song is a a special Irish song. It's a song I wrote. There's I never had any kids of my own, and one night down at the Minstrel Show Coffee House, I was sitting in the green room there, and this beautiful little kid comes up and starts telling me all about how she's studying Irish fiddle and Irish dance. And she got my fiddle out and polished it all up, and then she polished the other. And I wonder if she does this at home. But at any rate, she was so cute that I was inspired to go home and write a song. And the song is named after her. It's called Sharon, Shannon Riley. It's a jig. And she's going to come up and dance it right now. Beautiful. Shannon just ch happens to be the daughter of our director today, Sandy Riley. All right.
<laughs> Thanks very much, Shannon. That's great. Thanks for being a guest on Horses Sing None of It. Right. Nice tune. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is something else I wrote. This one uh, got published in Sing Out magazine, not because I sang it so well, but because Judy Bubar's daughter, Akira, sang it well. And she got noticed the old songs, and so they put it in Sing Out magazine. Congratulations. That's a Thank very you. nice honor. <laughs> yeah, I feel good about that, for sure. Um, I've been sending them things ever since. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's called the butternut tree. The butternut tree is like, um, it's like a, a walnut tree, sort of, except that um, it's a little different. And um, uh, my, uh, they used to use the, the seeds from the butternut tree to dye uh, Confederate war uniforms. It's a pretty well-known uh, tree down in those areas, although not too much known around here. And uh, I did, did this song because of my um, uh, great-grandfather, I knew for 10 years, shows how old I am, but um, he, um, he showed me how to make a whistle once, and uh, I um, don't remember how to make that whistle, but I put it in this song anyway. <laughs> Here we go, Frank. <laughs> He dug a hole in the early morning, planted the seed of a butternut tree to grow tall and strong as John Jacob would be. The sun came up and the sun went down before many months had gone around. Jacob could call them, Jacob could stand, the butternut branch held in his hand. John Jacob had a dog, John Jacob had a cat. Butternut tree got fat. The dog went out to bend his knee, and his favorite tree was a butternut tree. Sap in a butternut rises high. Early in the spring, when the cold winds die, you can feel that bark off like a skin. Make a whistle for the play this song. stood under the tree and said, May the love between you always sing, for as smooth as a butternut tree. Along came the little ones, one, two, three, John Jacob, Junior, and Sally, and me. We all had wood and toys for free, John Jacob, he made them from the butternut tree. John Jacob, he had him a pretty good life. Sixty years, Sarah was his wife. The kids grew up and had families like branches from that butternut tree. The day still came when he grew old and butternut thawed against the cold. Every now and then you'd see him walking with a stick from the butternut tree. He died and the place was bought by a man who put in a parking lot. The very first part of his strategy was a taking of an axe to the butternut tree. I took a long walk yesterday where the butternut tree used to swing and sway. I looked at the ground where the asphalt cracked. There was three little leaves just looking right back. Three green leaves on a brand new stem. That butternut tree's coming back again.
Thank all you. right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. I can see why they printed that in Singha. That's a great song. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I wish they just. I wish I could write some more like that. <laughs> That's great. I did write one. I did write one um, about my childhood. Well, young. I grew up in in the Appalachian area of, of in, in long, long ago. You know, Appalachian, Ohio, and West Virginia. And in those days, we only had one recreational fluid, and it was called beer. And so I wrote a song about all the brands of beer that I could think of. And that's what we're going to do now, if I can still think of them. Okay. Too many of them at a time will get you down. OK. okay. She was only a poor miller's daughter, quite unaccustomed to sin. She make a loaf down by the water, now pity the plight she was in. For I was her iron city logger, she was my sweet jealousy. But now I am sadder but wiser. Oh, they've taken my Jenny from me. Bring Bex, bring Bex, oh, bring Bex, my sweet Tennessee. Bring Bex, bring Bex, my Jenny, who's carling to me. Her parents, they both were a Guinness. The bats they could say was their worst. But my Heine could not be persuaded. <laughs> for she had a terrible thirst. Her mom and her paps tried to tell her. I was a low and brown, you see. But she said he's a remarkable feller. None has such a false step as he. Bring Bex, bring Bex, oh, bring Bex, my sweet Tennessee. Bring Bex, bring Bex, my Jenny, who's carlings to me. Married her off to an old man who had not a lot left at appeals. <laughs> he was gross on his neck, was a moose head, and the schlitz on his face never healed. Of course, she could not abide it. Rhine Gold would not pay for her soul. So one night when the lone star was rising, she went where the rolling rocks roll. Bring Bex, bring Bex, oh bring Bex my sweet Tennessee. Bring Bex, bring Bex, my Jenny who's calling to me. Hey, that was very punny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the prize is how many beers were there in that song? <laughs> you don't know, do you? No, I, I wasn't counting. Well, that's what I do. I usually uh, have a, a song. Uh, first, I sing a con about, song about a car wreck, and then I sing this song, <laughs> and the prize is the beer can that we smashed up in the car wreck for winning the number of numbers. There's 21 in that song, by the way. Anyway, what's next on our agenda here, Frank? Um, uh, another uh, vocal. Oh, another vocal? Um, in D. A vocal in D. My Mary. Oh, that, OK. Right. Yeah. All right. This is about a three and a half to four minute song. I hope we have time for that. Three and a half. Yes, you do. OK. This is the song that I wrote and uh, went to Ireland 
uh, and sang in their All Ireland Fla, and um, got first second prize actually over there, which is actually good. It's noticed. I mean, they didn't send me home without any money. Um, okay. Got a good D chord, Frank? It was early in springtime I first met my Mary. Early in summer she lay by my side. Early in May when I asked her to marry. Early in June when she first was my bride. My Mary would dance, and the mist in the morning would rise from the grass and fade into the sky. And the birds in the trees would sit on their branches and wish they could sing like my Mary and I. On the 15th of August, just a year later, a little wee girl child came into our lives. And the end of the rainbow could never have riches like the gold in her hair and her flashing green eyes. And the passing of time turned our pennies to dimes. The flowers in the field turned to food on the vine. And of all the king's men and all the king's horses, there was none that was happy as Mary and I. Once in September, I went to a wedding where a fine Irish boy walked away with his prize. And I said to my Mary, how late it is getting. I sure will be missing those flashing green eyes. My Mary, she smiled and it set me to thinking of the time long ago when she stood by my side and whispered I do while the church bells were ringing so long ago when she first was my bride. Now it's late in December my Mary lies sleeping on a hill by the church where we stood side by side. And I can tell by the way that these old bones are creaking, it won't be long till I lie by her side. And my Mary will dance and the mist in the morning will arise from the grass and fade into the sky. And the birds in the trees will sit on their branches and wish they could sing like my Mary and I. Okay. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Thank you very much. Very moving song. I, I know. If, if I write a song, and I've heard other people say this, you, you don't know it's a good song unless it makes you cry. And uh, if it does, then you've got to play it enough so it doesn't anymore, and you can do a, do a good job on it. <laughs> what do we have left? Any idea? We have uh, just under three minutes. Just under Two three minutes. Two and a minutes. half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Do you think we should do the pig ankle now? I guess we could do that. Now, why don't we do the pig ankle now? <laughs> this is this is a uh, tune that I know Ralph knows, and I've been waiting to play this with him again for a long time. He used to play it with Lil, Lou Gelfond, I know, and I like it a lot, and I want to play it with Ralph and Frank now. It's called the Pig Ankle Rag. Oh, before we go, let's, before tell, we go. let's tell people how to get in touch with you oh, in case yeah. they want to find out about your music, your Absolutely. performances, whatever. 
Yeah, uh, you, you can write to me at uh, uh, WEST110 at Verizon.net. Uh, I don't have a website yet. I don't have a CD yet, but if you send me $5, someday I'll have one. But <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, um, uh, that's west110 at verizon.net and I'll be glad to answer anybody's uh, uh, questions or, uh, or anything else that I can do. Okay, that should take up two minutes now. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jim, for being our guest on Horses Sing None of It. And thank Frank, you. Thank you so oh, much. It was a real pleasure. Good to see you. All right. Take it away, Jimmy. Okay. <laughs>